the end of the week, bros. Uh, which to me isn't much because I all that means is I have to clean today. I got a lot of cleaning to do. But but first, let's have some fun. Let's watch some awesome videos, my dudes. Let's watch. I got some cool stuff I wanted to check out. Just so y'all know what's on the docket for today's morning. We got a, a cool-looking Sunny V2 video, which we love Sunny V2 here. Uh, apparently a prankster, a YouTube prankster that lost everything, quote-unquote. Uh, I don't know what everything is to them, but uh, I'm not a big fan of, like, the no, no no actual prank pranksters. Like, there's, like, good pranks, and then there's, like, pranks that just make no sense. Like, that's just not even a prank. You're just bothering people in public. Uh, but, like, so I'm, I'm wondering what kind of prankster this is and what sent them over the top. Or I guess what, what sank them down to the rock bottom. Uh, we got another sub mechanophobia video because for me this stuff is terrifying. And then we got a, a funny video, a, a funny pet video, a, a, a fluffy video from Fluff Town, which looks awesome. <laughs> I guess they just make funny, like, pet videos, which I'm 100% in. Uh, but yeah, bros, I got myself a little breakfast here on the side. My doggos are outside, I just put them out there with a fresh bowl of food and water, and they're having some fun. We just got some new stuff. I got them a bunch of new toys, so they're happy. They're all happy. My favorite pigeon is over there, in, 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 in well, she's in her cage right now. Normally, she likes to fly out and, and get on top of the Wi-Fi machine, but I'm kind of scared that that's, like, that's why I've been having internet issues, maybe? Maybe she's, like, knocking the wires over, and, and she does peck at some stuff, so... I'm gonna let her out later, but for now, she's gonna stay there. I got her a ginormous freaking cake. Like, it's way bigger than what a pigeon needs, but but I love her. All right. Let's get into it, my dudes. I hope, again, I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, this is, of course, this is my, my new chibi model. I hope everyone, I want compliments or insults. You know, I'll take both, but I want people to notice me, senpai. Uh, so go ahead and drop any, any critiques down in the comment section of this VOD video, whatever the freak. All right, my dudes, let's get into it. Sunny V2, the YouTube prank that lost everything. Drop a like, because we like Sunny V2 here. From Millionaire Prank. How loud is that? Star. Let me cheat. Hold on, I need, I need to see how loud, how loud you is. Saved every penny I had. I think I would have close to a million dollars. To part-time Taco Bell. Yeah, that's employee. about, that's about where I, I like it. That's about where I, I like it. Taco Bell. I've been there since February. This is the story of how oh, Andrew Taco Hales Bell must lost be everything while maintaining a mature attitude about his own poor choices. Let's see how I became broke. Great shirt. <laughs> His channel going by the name of Lorf blew up unbelievably quickly during the early days of YouTube. Within two weeks of posting his first two videos, they'd gain more than 60,000 views each and it's really no wonder why. The ideas were unique, funny and enticing, which when combined with Andrew's mellow oh, yet dude, that's a great personality, prank. made that is for a great incredibly prank. entertaining content. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. There's no, there's no like... You know what I mean? Like, everyone could laugh at that. Even the guy getting pranked. On top of this, Andrew was able to develop his own style, where every interaction was confident yet simultaneously awkward, with these reactions being so entertaining that Andrew ended up on the news after posting only nine videos. I actually what really you love that first one. came up to you in public and tried to hold your hand. Well, a group of guys found out and posted the results on- I love, I love, I love this guy, like, went for it. He's just like, yes. That's right, bro. That's I don't know what what is up with that, but I'm 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 like that with all my friends too. Like it, it will now. I'm not saying I'll go out there and like handhold random strangers, but like when I'm at, I'm at Anime Expo or something like that, and somebody comes to do something like like similar ish, you know, or just someone going yeah, and like some random like one time random chick came up to me at the convention was just like yeah, she started. I don't know who she was screaming for, but I guess I, I she might have been like yelling for I don't know who it was, but she, uh, she was like yeah, and I'm like yeah, and I'm good, just I don't know. Good energies, good energies, good vibes. On YouTube, and now it's gone viral. The video in question was simply titled Holding People's Hand, and it would gain over 5 million views in only three weeks. Ah, uh, the times before the Rona appeared, huh? When you could just publicly get six feet close to people. <laughs> Which when combined with two other viral videos titled Awkward Elevator and Actually Picking Up a Girl, Lorf was able to achieve over 500,000 subscribers only 12 months after posting his first video. Nice. In the process, Andrew maintained a strict upload schedule, posting a prank every single Monday for over 50 weeks straight. That's, that's tough, goodness. You gotta be real, you gotta really freaking sit there and just think. While showing 
Like, I don't think I could come up with good ideas like that, 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 that often. Strong accountability in each video description, such as this is the first week after 50 weeks in a row that I didn't upload on Monday. I hope you'll forgive me. Andrew's consistency and desire to improve the content led to two new innovative videos titled tipping servers $200 as well as paying for people's groceries. And while this That's type of content nice. has since been popularized by Mr. Beast, it was basically unheard of in 2013, helping Lorf to pass 1 million subscribers only six months after hitting 500,000. <laughs> However, while it seemed as though everything was going perfectly, Andrew began to experience a few major problems. With the prank genre now being significantly more popular on YouTube, Lorf had to compete with other channels who were able to achieve better reactions by faking their videos. Andrew would diss these fake channels in a video uh... titled Easy Way to Go Viral before posting a series of his own ironic, obviously fake videos showing just how easy it was to achieve an inauthentic reaction. Andrew went on to state that despite his success, this was a pretty depressing period in his life. So I called my mom and she didn't pick up with my dad and he didn't pick up and I hadn't seen like any of my friends in a month or so and I just felt like, like no one cared about me. <laughs> Yet these Aww. kinds of videos would only add to his charm I get, as a relatable I get, I get guy that, who's willing to talk about his darkest moments. I get that when when you're when you're really like knee deep into the you know when you're really knee deep into the YouTube thing you really have to freaking like it becomes a really difficult thing to sort of uh split your time up between like family socializing stuff like that and even just like house chores and stuff get get a bit difficult to like time it all out because by the time you're done creating the video taking all the time I'm sure he had he had to be editing all this on his own and stuff so by the time you actually finish doing all that you're just so wiped out mentally you're tired you're fatigued and you just want to take a nap you want to you want to rest your brains uh so the, like the 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 what the the thing i do in order to try to escape that sort of like that, that mental drain is pretty much after i'm done streaming or whatever uh i either will take a quick nap which is totally fine by me or i'll just like start playing some music some jams and while i vacuum which is like a super like turn your brain off vacuum turn your brain off mop turn your brain off and just like dust things you know like you you really have to like get get yourself uh uh something like that you, you i used to just like play like nonsense like I, i'm not gonna call them nonsense games but like busy work games uh in it is a way to like shut my brain off and not have to not have to try to be funny you know <laughs> but uh uh you know it's all it really depends and i i can totally understand how, how like that that dr that mental drain especially if uh, your friends and family don't really want to get them too involved with your YouTube stuff, or they don't really care, you know. So, and and, and that's like one of the toughest things about the about doing stuff like this is like you really want to talk to other people about your YouTube stuff and what you're doing, how it's going, what's your progress, what's the next idea you have. And some people just don't care, and and it's like it's natural, it's fine, but at the same time, that's what that, I feel like that's why so many YouTubers become friends with other YouTubers because you finally have someone to talk to, to about this stuff. Moments. This gave him a positive social media image as someone who was unconcerned about always looking perfect, which will continue into videos such as this one, simply titled Crying, where Andrew would talk about some of his deepest insecurities before receiving comments such as, Dang Andrew, I love you so much. Thank you so much for being so real. It allows others to be in their feelings and be okay with how they are. It does that for me. Thanks man, I love you so much. What's crazy is that every person that watches this video can relate in some way. Much respect to you sir. Andrew, you are a goddamn legend for posting this vulnerable of a video. I love you man, ride the wave. But while Andrew's reputation was at an all time high, his motivation to produce content was at an all time low, leading to the announcement that he was done with the pranking genre altogether. For now I really need to just take a break from social experiments and pranks and I can't do them anymore. They're all the same to me and it's just really boring. It's making me depressed and I don't know, I, I just need to try new stuff. This new stuff that Andrew planned on trying was also explained in the I, I think it's a, it's a great idea if you're not enjoying something, you're not having fun with something. People are going to notice that you're not having fun. People are going to notice that you're just not putting in the... Like, it's, no one wants to watch you do things that aren't fun. Because if you're not having fun, then the audience isn't having fun. Like, there's no point. Like, that's, that's why, I, like, if... If I don't find something entertaining or if I don't find something fun, I'm not going to do it. Like, it's just like, I'm sorry to everyone here who's just like, you will do as I say. Uh, but they go, if I'm not having fun with it, I just ain't going to do it. I'll, I'll definitely take recommendations all day, every day. I'll try anything one time. Uh, but if, if it's just not fun, if I'm not enjoying it, if I'm not having a good time with it, I'm just not going to do it. Just not going to do it. Uh, 
that being said, there is a uh, what's the word here? Not not. Prof I want to say professional way to do it, or but that's not really the word. But there's a there's a there's a there's a way to do it that I feel like would would really help you or 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 keep your audience on track with you. Is that a good way to say it? I guess. And that's just like never quit cold turkey. You want to you want to take it very slow. You want to uh, uh, put out the content that people like, while at the same time moving into content that you prefer, and make it make it a bit of a slow burn. In in, in other words, you you want to sort of slide people right into it like a slip and slide. You know, like you want to slip and slide. You got that we got all wet. So you got to keep you got to keep the audience moist. Audience needs to be moist, otherwise you're not gonna get any kind of traction, bro. Video interview stuff. We we have like a little set set up in my apartment now. We're gonna try this Jimmy Fallon between two ferns type thing with YouTubers, models, or whatever. With the teased interviews eventually becoming a series by the name of Chatting With. He began by talking to other YouTubers such as That Was Epic and Cody Co. However, the real success began when he'd interview increasingly unique humans, such as chatting with a 400 plus day Fapstronaut, chatting with a flat earther, What's and a chatting with a 23 year old stock trading millionaire, each of which helping Andrew to earn $250,000 nice. in 2019. Glad you that success, Andrew bro. will back this up by earning a further $200,000 in 2019, and by all accounts it seemed as though there was nothing that could derail his success. I'm sorry. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I hope it's like I'm assuming you didn't invest or or put money away or anything like that because good gracious. It announced that the chatting with series would continue into 2020. That is six like digits, my dude. Already planned out, ready to rock and roll for 2020. Although there was no way that Andrew could have predicted what was just around the corner. I was doing these chatting with COVID canceled like the first like five I had going into 2020 and so I had to like start vlogging and experimenting. As mentioned, the pandemic put a stop to the chatting with series. What you mean, bro? Why weren't you using chat rooms? Forcing Andrew to experiment Skype existed. with various unrelated videos. He posed dancing, skating, and reactions, Discord. yet none of these blew up to the same degree as his content had in the past. When Andrew returned to the chatting with series after isolation, each episode averaged only 50,000 views each, leading him to admit that the channel wasn't doing so well. My channel's been dying. I've been pretty lost this year. It's been a very humbling year, definitely. Which had been the partial result of a few poor habits. March, April, in quarantine, watching movies, smoking weed, drinking. It was awesome, but also depressing. However, in all actuality- Good gracious, my dude. Yeah, no, uh, trust me when I say none of that stuff is, is, uh, gonna help you get out of a depression. Uh, I've said this to other people before, but some of that stuff, I highly recommend you only do it when you're in a good mood. Like, no, not gonna, not even gonna lie. Sometimes it is better to just not be on that kind of stuff when you're when you're when you're in your bad feelings, because whatever vibes you start off with during your session, bro, you're gonna keep that vibe throughout the entire session. It's just gonna get like more. Quality. Andrew's amplify worst it, bro. habit might have been overspending. You might be all giggly in the moment, later, but you're gonna you're gonna video you're gonna get a right smack in the face in reality at one point or another. Fifty thousand dollars to the bank. Man, these credit card companies are banks or whatever. Yeah, they really sneak up on you, and then whoops, two hundred bucks a month of interest accruing every month. By this point, Andrew's channel was only gaining a million views per month, with no foreseeable oh, yeah. increase in the quality of the content, as he had to sell most of his YouTube gear just to service the loan. I had a 70D and a Canon 5D and two SM7Bs, and uh, yeah, I just sold it all, and that paid off one credit card. In the process, Andrew moved out of LA to a more affordable area. We found this Airbnb two months ago for 400 bucks a month, and yeah, we're just uh, pinching pennies and just trying to rapidly get out of debt. Where he'd film a video titled How I Became Broke, summarizing the situation that he'd found himself in. Didn't manage my money wisely. I traveled a lot, I went to Russia, Japan. And another big thing is taxes. I always like forget to save money for the taxes and then it's like boom, you owe 40 grand. It's like, oh, all the while paying $3,600 a month for this rent. That was a big mistake there. That was just a dumb flex. <laughs> Weird flex. I didn't know what I was doing. On top of managing his money poor. This is honestly something that is severely sad to see and, and it is a constant thing to see. Uh, oh, goodness, man. Uh, it's it's one of those things that I have been very fortunate that my my both my parents have always been raised me to be very smart about my money and how I how I uh, apply it. 
But I feel like any anyone, I feel like he shouldn't, like, anyone and everyone would fall into the same trap. I'm going to sneeze. I just will. Whoa. Anyone and everyone can fall into the same exact trappings, my dude. Uh, and it just comes down to the fact that you, you've you never had a large amount of money to play with, effectively. So when they, when they give you this amount of money, you don't know how to handle it properly, my dude. And that's, it's, it's something that I don't think anybody can really escape from. I don't think even myself thinking that I'm some kind of, you know, thinking that I, I, I managed my money properly now. It, you might not like I, I you, you just like as soon as you get a certain amount of cash or some amount of income the the rules change everything changes and you you need to now sometimes like it's not like the government calls you up like hey by the way you should probably prepare it because at the end of the year you're actually gonna be paying us forty thousand as opposed to what you usually used to do which is pay way less it's like no it, they don't tell you they don't warn you they just sort of hit you with it and be like hey, that's your problem dude that's not our problem it's your problem you you owe us money so it's 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 very much the kind of situation where i can see like just the emotional like i i finally have money i can do what i want freedom and then immediately again that slap from reality right in the face my my keyboard just finally lit up i got a new keyboard from the five and below <laughs> uh it's never lit up for me before and now it is and i didn't press anything Okay, five dollar keyboard. Oh, the gentleman, five dollar keyboard. Would add that <laughs> complacent. I partied too much and I got lazy and less focused and didn't upload as much. So I had like ten grand coming in a month every month. Relatable. Hardly doing anything and it, YouTube kind of just spoiled me and I don't know. I guess I thought it would last forever, <laughs> but it started to go down and down and down. And, and while it was depressing that he'd spent every dollar he ever made from YouTube, this video would also become a turning point. As was seen in the early days of his channel, Andrew's audience simply appreciated the honesty with the entire comment section offering words of encouragement. Andrew's ability to just keep it real and say vulnerable things out loud transparently is incredibly endearing. Inspiration to be more open. Andrew, you're a legend, man. Your openness and candor has positively impacted more people than you realize. Takes a real man to admit and truly reflect on the real mistakes one made. And in order to move forward and do better, you have to do just that. These comments in combination with the video's strong performance led Andrew in a brand new direction where he'd basically document what it was like to be someone rebuilding from zero, which turned out to be an incredibly entertaining genre. On the 1st of October 2021, Andrew uploaded a video titled I Got a Job yeah, in which he'd explained bro, that he'd return to he, old oh, school awesome. employment. So I got a job. It's with this company called nice. Amazon. It'll be like my first job in about 10 years. Oh, you're working for Amazon! <laughs> I'm actually kind of excited. However, while Andrew seemed excited yeah, about his new position at Amazon, it didn't take long before he was already talking about quitting. Like night three. Amazon is not the best employer, that being said. Yeah, so I don't know how much longer I'm going to last. It took only a month before Andrew confirmed his resignation. No, yeah, don't Amazon quit. Part, I, can't, I couldn't do it. After which he tried DoorDash and Instacart. You can't get unemployment like that if you quit. Disappointing. All in all, it took about... Almost three hours, I made about 22 bucks. Andrew knew what he needed to do. He had to return to content with a new successful series. Still need to figure out some kind of thing. Yeah, but that's that's a gamble and a half regardless, bro. You can do that while thing. working. Still figuring that out. Taking inspiration from his chatting with videos, Andrew launched a series titled People On, in which he went out on the street to talk about a range of interesting topics, one of which being people on credit cards, in which it's obvious that Andrew has learned his lesson. Do you feel yeah. credit cards are a good or a bad idea? I think they're a bad idea because nobody's taught how to use them. I agree. The series is yet to rival his previous work in terms of view count, yet the idea has a lot of potential, with oh, some yeah. of his fairly basic episodes having achieved almost 200,000 views. With a bit more effort, the series could easily do over 500,000 views per episode. However, until then, Andrew seems pretty content with his new position at Taco Bell. I got a job. I work at Taco Bell. I work the drive through Wicked easy. Love my boss and my co-workers. It's all, it's all very chill i work uh, wednesday thursday and sunday it's just look y'all gotta take like like okay bs aside that right there genius genius move let me tell you something right now as somebody who worked for seven years at the top at the top of the freaking ladder at, at, at my previous job seven years uh i was a manager if you freaking hate <laughs> your bosses if you hate your coworker, if you hate 
the environment, the people you serve, the, the, the just, just the job in general, you're not going to go very far, bro. And it's going to be mentally taxing and it's going to wreck you for a long time. That's how that's how you people get really pessimistic. That's how people get really, really uh, all up in their own like feelings. And just get trapped in this vicious cycle of I can't do better. I'm not going to do better. And you can. You can. Uh, it's like, I, again, I, I feel like he shouldn't have quit, quote unquote. Because you couldn't get unemployment like that. But, hey, he if he was on his game and he really went and got that job at Taco Bell and he enjoys it, he loves it, it pays the bills, you don't need anything more, bro. You don't need anything more. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. Like, there's no reason you should never feel ashamed of the job you have if you enjoy doing it, if it pays the bills, and it allows you to do the things that you want to do. Yeah, you might not be taking monthly trips to Japan or Russia or wherever the frick you want to go, bro. But, like, that's all. Like, save that for people who hate live here in America. Like, you want to go visit another country? Go do it. That's fine. Like, you live your life the way you want to live it here and now. You don't need to be making those six figures and doing all this crazy stuff. As long as you're you're paying your bills, who cares? You just and do the things you enjoy. Find a job where you can pay your rent, pay your bills, pay your credit cards, and still have some little bit of money left over for you to enjoy your hobbies. Whatever helps you be able to do that, that is what place you want to be. Uh, so Taco Bell sounds to me like it was a great, great, great. Great idea for him to do. It's a side hustle. I'm, I, I'm still doing YouTube. Andrew even stated that this yeah, wasn't the great. first time that this kind of thing has happened. I've done this like two or three times, and then I just eventually get out of it and get rich again. <laughs> so surely he'll be able to rebuild in the future. Bro, how much luck does one person have to have to have gone completely broke and then go rich again? What are you talking about? <laughs> I wish I, I want to be rich one time, I'm too, but you know, it's fine, brother. Like it's again, if, even if I did somehow, I don't even know what I would do with all that money. I'd probably invest. I'd buy an apartment. I'd rent. I'd rent things. I think <laughs> pull a pull a Mr. Beast on him, buy a bunch of Mr. Didn't Mr. Beast just buy all of his employees houses or something like that for like, like it's, dude's a dude's a maniac. Dude is an absolute lunatic. I love him. Uh, alrighty, my dudes, freaking. Yeah, no, honestly, if I, like, real quick, like, last thing, I, I want to drive home that point. Please, 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 find a job that you enjoy being at. Find a job where you where your bosses treat you nicely. And if you have a job where your boss treats you unfairly or horribly, even one time, quit on the spot, my dude. Quit on the spot if you have to. Because it, it's just not going to be worth it. Because you, you might need that money, but you need your mental health and you need your physical health and you need your self-respect a lot more than you need money. Uh, and, and, and you can get another job. You can get another job. Don't don't think that any job is beneath you. You you do whatever job you have to do. Uh, uh, that's It's, it's so, so much an important thing. You can't, like, the amount of people that I have seen leave, uh, uh, I'm not going to go too far into this one, but the amount of people that I've seen come out of college with degrees with 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 just having that good 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 american dream of doing all the things you're supposed to do because the government says that's how you do it and then they still end up in the exact same position i was in when i came out fresh out of high school uh where they're working at a at a at a, at a pretty much just retail they're working retail they're working you know something small it's like no dude like you just find the things you want to do in life and find the job that allows you to do them you really have to put your your uh, priorities in order, and 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 it, it can be a very difficult thing. And you should never feel ashamed that that you might not have started off strong. It doesn't matter if like I've seen people at the age of thirty realize this and have to pivot. And you know what? That's fine. If you're thirty, if you're forty, if you're whatever, you have to pivot. Pivot, my dude. You have to do what makes you happy because it, it, it's never just going to uh, pop up to you. It's never just going to happen. You're never going to win the lottery. We can hope. We can play. But you just you just have to assume you're never going to win the lottery. So you might as well make what you want to make happen happen, even if it's like only the tiniest amount or even like the, 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 the meagerest of abilities to do it. If all you can do is stream one a, once a day, you stream once a day. If all you can do is stream two hours, can you stream two hours Monday, Friday, then stream two hours Monday and Friday. You do what you have to do, bro, because you enjoy doing it. Not because you want to do it. Not because you want to get rich. Not because you want to get fit. You do what you have to do because you want to do it. 
that's it. That's all I can say. I wish I was a lot more well spoken to be able to phrase that better. But you, you, it's one of those things that I, I learned. Uh, uh, I feel like too late, but at the same time, just in time. All right, anyway. <laughs>